uh, has led to a police investigation into Norview Residential School in Rochdale. Uh, and there are 20, this is in the public domain, 21 suspects, 7 victims. And I met with the divisional commander for Rochdale on Friday and he tells me that they expect arrest to be made imminently. These are people who were in a network with Smith abusing children at Norview School. So these are perpetrators, alleged perpetrators uh, that are still out there. As I, say, I said earlier, I think initially, uh, I think pressure was applied. Uh, and that, well, the, an interesting point to make actually is that they didn't prosecute him initially because the director of public prosecutions felt that uh, they were unreliable witnesses. The people he was abusing were unreliable witnesses. So these are white, poor white, working class boys uh, who would be unreliable. Uh, the contrast I draw is that if we fast forward to the Rochdale grooming case, uh, the initial reason for not pushing the prosecution there was because they were white, poor, uh, white working class, and poor girl. Yes. And you do wonder what had been learned, if anything. Well, I'm just saying that. Years. That was right. I, th I think he, he was. Uh, as years went on. I think I think Smith was prepared because I do think that we have to understand why the authorities. I don't have all the answers, but we have to understand why the authorities uh, failed to investigate such high-profile cases. I think such an inquiry would also uh, get to the bottom of where some of the dossiers and information that's existed and that's been collected over the years, where it is and how that can be used to identify uh, what went on at the time. And uh, not only will that help and support victims of this abuse, uh, but I think it will also ultimately lead to a number of other perpetrators being identified, just as has been the case in the Northview uh, Residential School investigation. I think that I think that politics is the last refuge of a child sex abuse deniers, you know, and, and it's an important point. Other institutions, the police, uh, have dealt with this and changed the culture. The local authorities are, ch are beginning to change the way that they deal with it. The media uh, are keen to investigate this. But in terms of politics, I think there is a continual view that we should sweep it under the carpet, that we shouldn't, that we shouldn't speak about it, that we shouldn't name people, uh, that there shouldn't be a discussion about what's gone on in terms of child sex abuse. And, and there's pressure applied to people, and I think it would be better Have if you we all... Have you pressure applied well, to you personally? Well, yeah, well, of course there's pressure applied in terms of whether, you know, whether I name, name people or not. I just wanted to um, refer to something you just said, um, and in fact you've said it quite a few times, that one of the reasons uh, Mr Smith was able to get away with what he was, well, I think you have the word network and connection. Are you saying what the local police or local authorities were sort of uh, working with him or complicit with him? I think higher up, uh, higher up the food chain. Uh, in terms of the networks that uh, Smith uh, belonged to. There's, there's no doubt about it that uh, he, for example, he attended Elm Gas Station. We know that the Metropolitan Police have confirmed that. Uh, I spoke to a victim that he abused at uh, Elm Gas Station. There were other high-profile figures uh, that it is alleged that attended uh, Elm Gas Station. Uh, you, know, you know, an important point, actually, is uh, one of my predecessors uh, for, for the Littleborough part of my constituency, Geoffrey Dickens, uh, Conservative MP, produced a dossier in the 1980s, uh, which he presented to then the then Home Secretary about the paedophile information exchange, about paedophiles operating and networking within and around Westminster. Now, I think there are questions to be answered, and I think... What year was that? It was the mid-1980s, so the 84, 85. And who was the Home Secretary? Well, the Home Secretary was Sir Leon Britton, and I think it would be helpful if he stepped forward and shared his thoughts on where that dossier is. This is all in the public domain. But I do think it will be helpful to Sir Liam Britton to share his knowledge of what, uh, how he dealt with these allegations that were made at the time. But what happens with the dossier? Well, th that's an interesting question. Uh, we, can't, uh, we know that it arrived at the office, but we don't know where it is sent. And the inquiry that we talk about, I think, has to get to the bottom of this. And I think people like Sir Liam and others need to share their knowledge and understanding of what was going on at the time.
interesting story in the Mail on page five. There have been suggestions linking Leon Britton to historic child abuse allegations that have been circulating for a while. An MP using parliamentary privilege has raised this in the House of Commons. Parliamentary privilege means he can say stuff that if I was to say it on television, I could be clapped in irons and yes. thrown away, but in, uh, in, in Parliament, yeah. you can say pretty much what you like. Uh, but that's the point I'm making, that over the years, I think there's been a politician's agenda and the wider public is on is the point I'm making. They have sort of ignored this issue or tried to sweep it under the carpet. And uh, and I think that's what I'll get. And I think more transparency, more openness, uh, shining a stronger light on this type of issue inside or outside politics, I think is 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 a good thing. And I think we're at the early stages of working this up into something that could be substantial that would help the victims, that would help their prosecutions, and that would clear the, the air in terms of what has been a tragic, terrible, horrific episode in, in uh, British society. And many victims of child sex abuse, uh, and many of those who I, I meet, I often encourage, urge them uh, against their uh, will to, to seek compensation because I think they deserve it and often need it to receive the therapy that they should really get through the state. Thank you, Fanny. Uh, you, you rightly mentioned victims just now. One of the things that I one finds very concerning about this is that the victims that you talked about in this case were very often children who were in care, who should have been looked after by care, by, by the state and by local governments. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen as, as the, you've seen of the effects that this has had on them throughout their lives? Especially given that there were people who were placed in care in the first place. Come, little children, I'll take thee away into a land of enchantment. Come, little children, the time's come to play here in my garden of shade. 